Hey guys, hope you're doing well, Sam here. And in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about an AI agent that I built and deployed on a website for one of my businesses. I did this a couple of days ago. Um, so I'm gathering data on how well it's working and I'm refining it constantly at the minute. Um, but I wanted to show you how I set it up because it's so, so simple. Um, it was very easy, less than an hour, maybe two hours to actually um, test it and deploy it. And if you're anything like me, you know, you've been hearing a lot about AI agents at the minute and you're kind of trying to figure out okay well how can i make use of this in my business you know if you run a small business like i do um then it's trying to figure out okay where can i implement agents here that aren't kind of just like novel little use cases i'm um, so this one was really useful I've, I've put it on the website and what it does is it essentially there to help visitors of the website get more information about any of the services or products that we offer you know if they have any questions at all the chatbot agent can just answer all the questions because he's got access to the knowledge base of how our services work and how our products work. Um, so that's really useful. Then it also has access to my calendar so it can find times um, and it can book in a time slot for, a, for an initial call with a potential client. Only if though, I've set up the rules so that only it, it qualifies the lead first because I don't want anybody to be able to just book in a time in the calendar they have to qualify themselves first. Um, and this can all happen via an actual chat interface, kind of like a mini chat GPT for your website, which is really, really cool. So it's just been deployed. I'm gathering feedback. Like I say, it's a little bit rough around the edges. As, as you kind of see it used more, you kind of see the edge cases that you kind of need to plug. But I'll show you that in a minute um, as we get into the build. But before we just jump into the build today, if you don't know who I am, my name's Sam. I'm an owner operator of three different businesses, two of which are agencies one of which is an automation agency that I've been running now for close to 10 years. I've been doing automation for close to 10 years. So it's been a really interesting journey the past couple of years now that AI has come into, come into the fray. So yeah, I'm just learning a lot at the minute and I just want to make these videos to try and share with you guys as much as possible and share some tutorials and how-tos and what I'm learning and experiences. So if you like that kind of content, please do give me a like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's jump into today's build. So here's the final Lindy that we're going to build. As you can see, it's really simple. We've just got three steps. We've got a Lindy embed, we've got a search knowledge base, and then we've got the actual AI agent that's doing all the magic. But let me, before we jump into that, let me show you actually how this works. If I um, go to the Natural Die Agency website, you can see down here in the right-hand corner, I've got a little widget saying, hey, I'm pretty helpful, try me out. If I open this up, um, you can see down here, I'm just going to... You see Chatsworth opens up here and he's asking how he can help. Um, we've pre-programmed a few different um, prompts for the user. So you can say, tell me about your website packages, tell me about automation services, tell me about AI services. Uh, or the user can type, hello, I am a recruitment agency owner and I want to learn more about implementing automation into my business. So what's gonna happen here is once this gets submitted by the user, the Lindy is gonna wake up, um, the Chatsworth's gonna search the uh, knowledge base that it has access to, which includes the service pages from the website, and then it's going to do its job. Its primary goal is to make sure that they've got the information that they need, and then secondary job is to qualify the lead and book them in for a call. So. Great to hear you're interested in automation for your recruitment agency. We specialize in helping service businesses like yours streamline their application, their operations. Better understand if we're a good fit. Tell me how many team members do you currently have? What are your main processes you like to automate? All this kind of good stuff. It also gives them some pricing information so that they're aware of, of that. Um, if I say team of five, want to onboard, want to automate onboarding, uh, budget is unknown that's a typical kind of answer um and then chatsworth again is going to read the message and then respond in the right way so um as a recruitment agency you meet the initial criteria for our automation services onboarding automation is a great place to start before we proceed i'd recommend scheduling a 30-minute discovery call with sam to discuss your current onboarding process specific pain points potential automation solutions so it's giving them an idea of these are the things that we're going to discuss on the call um, and what you're going to get out of it. And then to arrange this, I'll need um, this information. So you can see, actually, let's just do it quickly. If I say my name is Dave, uh, Dave, let's just say Sam plus Dave. 
at trevector.com. Then we've got the company name is Dave's Recruiters and davesrecruiters.com. So we've, we're at the, as the user, we've given Chatsworth the information it's asked for. Now Chatsworth is going to go to my calendar. It's going to look for some available time slots, and then it's going to come back and present those to, to Dave here. You can see down here it had a little bit of a confusion with itself here, so we need to figure out what, what that issue is, but that's with constant refinement with these things. But you can see down here it's giving uh, three available slots for a 30-minute discovery call. It's giving it in this time zone as well. It's making the time zone very clear because um, I ask it in the instructions, which I'll show you, You know, make sure that you always use um, the user's time zone. So let's just say Tuesday. And then Chatsworth's going to get that booked in for us. So you can see, schedule the call for Tuesday. I've scheduled the call for Tuesday, February the 4th at 4 p.m. You'll receive the calendar invite shortly with a Google Meet link. Sam will use this time to understand the current processes and discuss potential automation solutions. Anything specific you'd like to sound to prepare for the call? No, that's fine, thanks. So you can see Chatsworth here has done us a massive favor. We haven't needed a human to intervene here. Um, it's still a little bit rough around the edges, I would say. Um, so it needs refining over time. I've already spent some time refining this, but the more that you use it, you see sort of these edge cases. Um, and I'll explain why that happens. So let's jump into the actual Lindy itself. It's a three-step process. So the first step is a Lindy embed. And you can see here, if I click on this, uh, this is the trigger, by the way. So I'll, I'll rebuild this again. So let's just say Lindy embed. This is a premium action. As you go to add this, it's going to ask us what domain name do we want this to be embedded on? I've put in the natural.agency domain name there. You can have the display name. I, I called it Chatsworth. You can change the accent color. You can see it changing the accent color, that color there. Then you can have it as either a pop-up or you can embed it onto the website if you wanted to embed it in like a container on your website. Then you've got the positioning and shape of the chat widget down here. The spacing, because uh, you can add custom spacing. How far or close do you want it from the uh, from the edge of the of your website? Then you can upload your own logo and icons and all that kind of good stuff. So you know it it is really customizable, which is great. You can add the greeting message in. Conversation starters were what I added in, um, as I showed you a second ago on the actual site. There is. Let me just go back here. Actually, if I show you the embed settings, the yeah, the conversation starters this. Tell me about your website packages. Tell me about your automation services. Tell me about your AI services. Then the call out message says, hey, I'm pretty helpful. Try me out. That's this little piece down here. And then there's the code snippet that you can put it on your website and uh, away you go. So that's how you set the embed up. It's all about how does the widget in the bottom right hand of the, the screen work. The next step here is for Lindy to search the knowledge base. Now, for, for the agent to be able to provide quality answers to whatever the user's question is, it needs to have information, right? We need to give it the information about our products and services. So what I've done here is um, I've added in a knowledge base uh, node. You've got the model down here. I've used the cheapest model here, which is GPT-40 Mini, because all that it's doing here is kind of searching the knowledge base. I don't think we need like a, you know, an O1 or an O3. We don't need the reasoning model or like an expensive model here to do a search. The 40 Mini seems more than capable for this task. Um, the query, I will let AI automatically fill in this field. So it's going to understand what the user has asked in the embed, then it's going to figure out what it needs to search in the knowledge base, and it's going to automatically uh, do that here. The max results, I'm also going to let the AI automatically fill that in. Um, and then the search fuzziness, I am leaving it default as, as 100%. The important part of this node is this bit down here where you say it says knowledge base. Um, so if I just click on this plus icon here, it gives me a bunch of different ways to add information to the knowledge base. What I've done is I've got very clear um, service pages on the website. So if I just open this up, 
you can see down here the it's going to load in in a second. It takes a little while. There you go. So we've got natural agency. The home page is added. Then we've got the design services page. And then we've also got the AI automation agency page. They're the service pages on our website. Uh, so they're added in. And it's synced these 19 hours ago, you can see. So it, it basically crawled these pages 19 hours ago to digest the content on these pages. So that is the knowledge base setup. If you've got, and you can use, you know, different things for this. Um, you could use your Google Drive if you've got documents in Google Drive. Um, you can connect this to your Notion. You can just text, you know, copy and paste the text in if you want to. There's a bunch of ways that you can add knowledge to the knowledge base. I really like this part of Lindy, to be honest. Um, I've tried to use other builders in the past, and then you start having to learn about RAG and um, how to, you know, how to set that up properly. In my experience, Lindy has made this part of the process the easiest of any tool that I've currently used. Um, so I really like it. Um, I, I like the knowledge base function here. And then the, the final step here is an AI agent. So if you wanted to add an AI agent and you just click on add step and then you can see here it says enter AI agent and you can see down here it's got access to a bunch of different things to be able to do its job, right? So if we click on the AI agent, we've got a prompt, the big long prompt here. Then if I scroll down, we've got the model. So we've got 3.5 Sonnet. I like to use 3.5 Sonnet. I always think that gives the best results personally. Then we've got the skills that this agent has access to. This is another nice thing about Lindy, I think, is the a giving the agent access to skills is very easy. Um, you can see that there is the first skill that it needs is to be able to send a message back through the Lindy embed. So that's added in. Then we've given it a bunch of Google Calendar skills, like create an event, delete an event. So create an event's needed for it to be able to add an event into the calendar, obviously delete an event just in case it creates one by accident and then, or, or if it creates one and then the user changes his mind or her mind and then says, hey, actually, no, let's change that. So it needs to be able to delete the event. It needs to be able to find available times. It also needs to be able to get event details, I believe, so that it can delete an event. So I've added that in there. You've got update an event just in case it needs to update an event. Um, and then like say, for example, if the user require, requests to add an extra attendee to the event, um, then you've got view calendars and view events as well, right? So you've given, uh, well, I've given it a bunch of functionality here. This might be overkill, guys. I'm not 100% sure. Like I say, I'm building with these tools. I'm learning as I go. Maybe we don't need the view calendars and view events, I, I, but I would assume that we do so that it can do the find available times thing, right? So if you can't view the calendars or view the events, I'm going to assume that it can't find the available times. So that was my logic in adding all this stuff in. Um, so before we go over the prompt here, and again, just to reiterate, guys, I'm going to turn this prompt into a template. And if you want it, you can find the templates and, and, this, the, and the actual link to this Lindy so that you can copy it into your own account in the description below. Um, so before we go into the prompt, though, I just want to go over to the settings here. So in the settings of this flow, you can provide a bunch of context. Um, now I believe that this context here is is kind of like providing context for the for the agent, right? So the way that I've set this up is to just give it important information that it needs to know. So you always give times and dates in the user's time zone. You always write Brit in British English. You always give very concise answers. Then I've said who you are and then what natural is. Um, again, there might be better ways of doing this, guys, but I've kind of tinkered with this a little bit and this seems to be working quite well. Then it's got some memories here. So Sam is in UTC plus seven time zone. Um, Sam's hours for meetings are between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. UTC plus seven, Monday to Friday. Uh, and then you can choose the default model here if you want to change that across the across the uh, whole Lindy. So I just wanted to show you the context here. Again, this will be in the prompt. I'll template this out. Um, this will be in the prompt templates down below. So if we go into the flow editor, we open up the agent, we've given it the bunch of tools that it needs to perform the actions. Now we're telling it what its goal is. So your primary goal is to help the user answer any questions that they may have about working with natural. Your secondary goal is to qualify them as a good lead. Our qualification criteria is for our automation services, uh, it's these things. For our design services, it's these things. If they're qualified, you should collect their information like name, email, and company. Um, 
and arrange an intro call with Sam by finding a slot in his Google calendar that works. You must also make sure to invite them to the meeting. You must also set up a Google meeting link for the meeting. Do not book anything outside of Sam's meetings prefer Sam's meeting preferences. If you book a meeting, make sure you confirm the details with them and let them know that you've sent the invite and they should receive an, an email right away. And I had to add that in because what I was finding was that um, as I was testing the agent out, it was booking the meeting, but it was just it wasn't confirming it with the with the user. So you know, as a user from a user side of things, you, you didn't really know that it was booked or not. Um, so yeah, you have to test this out and make sure that you tweak it. And the more you test it, you're going to find edge cases where it just doesn't do something in the right way, and then you have to come back to the prompt and then add it in. Um, so I can imagine that over time, this prompt for this AI agent can get pretty big, right? Um, and it can potentially use a lot of credits. That's one of the things that I'm finding with Lindy right now is um, you can burn through credits quite quickly. Um, so the, the next step really with, with an agent like this would probably be to figure out how to just optimize it and maybe add in extra conditions before the agent does or prefer, perform some of its goals or tries to get to some of its goals so that you can weed out the easy answers from the harder answers or the easy tasks from the harder tasks rather than clumping it all into one big AI agent like this. I'm, I'm unsure. I'm still exploring that. I will report back what I find. Um, but for now, this is working pretty well. I'm happy to let this run on the website and see what happens. So um, yeah, I wanted to show you this. I thought it was really cool. It's definitely far better than having a standard chat bot on your website where the user is kind of just like clicking things or typing things in and then getting pointed to support docs. I prefer the natural language um, interaction that the that the Chatsworth bot can have with our users now. And it's great that we can just feed it all the knowledge that it wants through this knowledge base. So think about how this might work for your business. You got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help out where I can. And uh, yeah, I'll keep building with Lindy and I'll keep reporting back what I find um, in the coming videos. So if that was helpful at all, do leave me a like and subscribe on the video. It really helps. And uh, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.